of you to worship this morning. Does it feel like October? <laughs> the whole year is just running away. Um, <clears throat> just entered the last quarter. How fast this year has gone by. Well, I'd like to start the service with the As We Gather. The Lutheran Women's Missionary League, and this is LWML Sunday, is an official auxiliary of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And since 1942, the LWML has focused on affirming each woman's relationship with Christ encouraging and equip, equipping women to live out their Christian lives in active mission missionaries to support global missions. LWML's mission statement is, as Lutheran women in mission, we joyfully pro proclaim Christ, support missions, and equip women to honor God by serving others. The LWML's vision statement is, the LWML is the leading group for LW, LCMS women, where each woman is welcomed and encouraged to use her unique God-given gifts as she supports global missions and serves the Lord with gladness. The first Sunday in October is a chance to recognize the LWML and to remind all, remind all of us to look for opportunities to serve the Lord in our communities. The motto of LWML is serve the Lord with gladness. Let us be glad this morning. And we sing the first hymn. Since we are gathered 
to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and to one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, God, have mercy upon us. us. Forgive, Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Say to the Lord, daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever. Amen. Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, 
lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place, and the Lord came and stood, calling at, at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual is Psalm 45, verses 6 through 7a. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have love of righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness. The epistle lesson is Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. to us this day from the book of St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, and he will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This time we have the uh, LWML pledge, and we say together, in firm gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to defend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into the eternal fellowship. 
fellowship with him. Amen. Pastor Rowan, we're actually going to, the, the music that you would hear right now, we're going to move to the offertory, so okay. you can go right ahead. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of you this morning. From God our Father in heaven, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our message is found in the first few lines of the message. Dear friends in Christ, you know, having been married for over 52 years, I still do not consider myself to be an authority on the subject. Although I've done my share of marriage counseling. What I have still to say, is there a plainer verse in the Old Testament than this one? Genesis 5, 2. Male and female, he created them. This text leads us up to this verse. The Lord wanted to make sure that we did not miss this important concept. So it is written in Matthew also, in the New Testament. Years later, Jesus answered, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female? What's so hard to understand about that? But man, man cannot leave it alone. What's going on in our world today? It's crazy. God created the most beautiful thing. The most beautiful thing in all creation. Woman. It was God who saw that Adam needed a helper. Not a hired hand, not a slave. A helper. And man, if you're like me, you probably have said, have said of your wife, she's the half that makes me whole. I looked in my career book recently, and I have officiated at 110 weddings. <laughs> Listen to this story. A young pastor was about to officiate his first wedding. He was obviously unsure of what to do. So he asked his senior pastor what he should do. And the senior pastor said to him, Well, don't worry about it. When you get nervous, just recite a Bible verse and you'll be all right. So on that day that he was to officiate the wedding ceremony, when he, it suddenly happened to him where his mind went blank and he forgot what to say. His mind was just not there. And then he remembered the pastor's advice. So he stood in front of the couple standing before him and he said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. <laughs> Today, many people do not understand what marriage is, what's it all about. But God reveals what marriage is all about in His Word. And what better place to look than the very first marriage? First, marriage is a gift from God. And right there, if couples would look upon each other as gifts from God, I don't think we'd have half the problems we have today. I know that Linda looks upon me as a gift, and sometimes she'd like to return that gift to the store. <laughs> Marriage is the greatest gift I think a couple can have. Next is salvation itself. Marriage was God's idea. And I'm going to tell you some stern advice that my mother gave me. 
Linda and I were, were arguing about something. We had probably been married five or six years. And I was really mad, whatever it was. When I get mad, well, it's not a pretty sight. I got in the car and I drove over to my folks. They lived about four or five miles from us. I walked in and my dad was watching a baseball game, so I sat down next to him and started to watch the game for a while. My mom was in the kitchen doing something, probably preparing a meal. She came and sat down. She asked about Linda and Tiffany. Tiffany was about two. Mike was not born yet. But mom could sense something. And she, so she started probing. I told her that I had gotten mad at Linda and left. She knew something was wrong. Well, I'll never forget my mom's words. And now I'm going to say I know you will never forget what my mom told me either. Because you'll always remember the words of Evelyn Ruland. My mom looked at me and she told me in a New York language that I could understand. She said, point blank, that is the mother of your child. And you had, I'm going to tone it down right here, you had darn well better take care of her. Now, get out of here, she said, and go home. I did go home. And whatever we were arguing about, I don't remember. <laughs> whatever it was, it wasn't worth all the fuss. God's plan for marriage is that it will be a union between a man and a woman. And I think that goes without saying. God's plan was never to make one superior and one inferior. God set it up this way. That was the order of things. I put it this way. As the head of the household, I know I have the bottom line, the final decision. But I'm a fool if I don't ask Linda for her advice, especially as it deals with the household, the children, or a big ticket item we're thinking about buying or not buying. Like the purchase of an appliance or a car. When we agree about those things, well, I know then it's the right decision. Well, here's a little story. It was 1974. Linda and I were enrolled in a first aid class. We needed to take it to be principal. Thought a principal should have that. So Linda took it to class with me. We were on our way to class. And we just happened to be going past the Chevrolet dealer. And in the showroom was this beautiful car. You know how they go around and down the thing that goes around? It was beautiful. I said, Let, let's, let's just look for a few minutes. It was a 1974 Dark blue Nova Super Sport. 350 four barrel. We bought that car. We never did make it to first aid class. <laughs> but because it was done together, that we agreed upon this together, we never regretted buying that car. And we enjoyed it. And yeah, it could get on down the road. That part was was pretty neat. But that's my point. When we agree on something, we, we live with it, whether it was right or wrong. A lot easier than somebody just going out on their own and getting something. The times I've lived to regret were the times when I didn't ask Linda for her advice. I like what the commentator Matthew Henry says. You'll never forget this either. He said, God made woman. God made the wife from Adam's rib for this reason. He did not make the, the woman from Adam's skull 
or anything in his head so that she would not rule over him. Neither did he make the woman from Adam's feet so that he would trample on her. But he made the woman from Adam's side so that Adam would put his arms around her, protect her, and so that Adam would know that she's someone dear to his heart. A marriage is not about a relationship of convenience. It's a relationship of firm, and fierce, unwavering commitment. And the two become one flesh. Except, again, for the gift of salvation and maybe the gift of children, there's no greater gift than that of the marriage relationship. And the Bible does not say, love your lovely wife or love your beautiful wife or, or love your slender and reasonable wife. It just says, love your wife. Love your imperfect wife the way that Christ loves his imperfect church. The Bible does not say, wives, love your absolutely flawless husband or love your capable husband. It just says, love your husband. Finally, we often joke, God did not create marriage for Adam and Steve, but for Adam and Eve. Likewise, he did not create marriage for Amy and Eve, but for Adam and Eve. Marriage was meant for and created for one man, one woman. Because we are different, we have different roles given to men and women. It doesn't mean that one's superior and one's inferior. I liken it more to the team concept. When we work together, that's a beautiful thing. The Bible says the husband is to hold fast to his wife. Hold tight. The glue of marriage is Christ and his love for us. Marriage is a fierce commitment, unwavering, clinging to your spouse. Come what may. We pray for God to bless our spouse and family. And in the name of Jesus, amen. Now look to the person next to you and say, male and female, he created them. We rise and we confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We say together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Dear Heavenly Father, you desire that all people are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Send out messengers and missionaries to every corner of the earth that people from every tribe, nation, and language would hear the saving mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, send your mercy to all who are struggling financially, the homeless, the poor, the unemployed, the underemployed, and those dealing with unexpected situations. Lead them through the challenging road and provide people and systems to help them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, walk with all those who are grieving in the shadow of death. Give them strength, Lord, and faith for the times ahead. Comfort them with the hope of your resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you invite us into holy conversation with you through prayer. But we often neglect this invitation. Help us to speak to you more frequently and more fervently. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you sent your Son to be the mediator between God and humanity. Grant us peace and reconciliation in our homes, our congregation, our community, our country, and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, look with favor upon those who are sick, injured, and recovering. We especially name those people that just known to possibly to just one or two of us here this morning. That you would be with them, be with all people that we know who are sick, injured, or recovering. And give them the strength, the hope, the courage, the faith for the days ahead. Have mercy upon them and heal them according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we commend all for those, for these who we pray for, to your infinite mercies, which are new every morning. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. This time, you may greet one another. In the name of the Lord, saying, Peace be with you, as a sign of reconciliation and of unity in the Spirit and the bond of peace. Peace be with you, Miss Linda. Peace be with you, Miss
For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you with all of the affection of Christ Jesus. Talk to this word, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Blessed shall you, shall, shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let your work be shown to your servants, and your glorious power to your children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We invite you now to come, and we're going to have our, put our, lay our hands upon Pastor Ruben, and we'll move this chair in the middle of it.
celebration of the sacrament as it begins with the preface on the bottom of page 9 of your worship folder. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings that you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not be, that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, we believe to overcome death and the grave and will rise again to new life. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them from all and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of the cross and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
and may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may strengthen you and hold you firm in the faith until life everlasting. Depart now in peace. Amen.
We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.